If you've ever realized you painted multiple elements on one layer and need to get them separated, this week I'm sharing a quick method to turn any flattened artwork into multiple layers. The color palette for this demo is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen and let's begin. Okay, I've got my brand new canvas and I'm just going to quickly draw some flattened artwork. So I'm drawing all these different elements in different colors on one layer. I'll be using my free signature brush which I will leave a link to right in the video description. And I've got my color palette all set to go right here. So first I'm going to start with my pink and I'm just going to draw some simple leaves going every which way. Next, I'm going to put some details in those leaves. So I'm going to grab my brown color, increase my brush size a little bit and just add in those details. As long as I have this brown color already selected, I'm going to add in some more like foliage elements. And then we'll just pop in some additional leaves. So I'm going to grab my lightest orange and these ones are going to be a little shorter and I'm purposely drawing them so they cover other elements. So we can talk about what happens when you run into a situation like that when it's flattened. And then just add in a few details with that darker orange color, reduce the size. So the reason why I chose this color is because I wanted to have a fine line that's similar to the color underneath it because there's something to keep in mind when you're making selections. So this should help if you ever run into one of those scenarios. This is just for demo purposes, so I'm not like being super careful like I normally would with making this. So I've got a bunch of leaves and some foliage. And let's say I wanted to put in some like wind swirls that swirled in throughout the artwork, but I wanted the wind swirls to be like behind the orange leaves, but in front of the pink leaves. If I tried to do that because I have everything on one layer right now, it's going to overlap both of these. So this is a situation where you would go to your layers and be like, oh my gosh, I have everything on one layer. I really need at least the orange leaves separate from the pink leaf so I can put my wind swirls in front of the pink leaf but behind the orange leaf. So I'm going to show you how to quickly separate them without having to remake all of your artwork. So with the flattened layer selected, you want to come up to your selections menu and down here you want to make sure that automatic is selected and we're going to do the orange leaves first. And the important thing right here is we don't want to also select the detail. We just want to select the orange leaf. So we're going to tap our orange leaf and that looks pretty good. I want it to be a little bit closer to the second color in here. So if I tap on here again and just drag it up a little bit, you can see I can get a little bit closer, but I don't want it all included. So that feels pretty good. I'm at like 8.6%. So I've got my color hugging this other color without including the other color. So I'm gonna leave it right there. And now I can tap on these leaves and I'll use that same threshold. And now that those are selected, all I have to do is hit copy and paste down here. And in, in my layers palette, you can see if I turn off my main artwork layer, I've got all those on their own layer now. So I can continue doing this for all the rest of the artwork. Just make sure you're on the right layer. So this is the one that has all the flattened artwork on it. So I'll hit the selection, automatic. This time I'm going to select this color. So if I tap on it, it's selected. And I usually, when I have details like this, I want this edge to be as large as it can be. That way I don't have a gap between one color and the other color. So if I just tap in here again and drag it up a little bit, I can expand that threshold just a little bit. Oh, I went too far. So I just pull it right back and that's perfect. So now I can just tap on these other elements and the exact same settings will be used. Copy and paste. And now if we go to our layers and turn off our flattened one, you can see that this looks pretty good. You can even drag these details above it and that would be the way that you would create it anyway. You would create your leaf shape and then your details. So obviously you're going to get rougher edges with this because we're making selections instead of drawing it all over again. But if you're just trying to work out an idea or create a sketch, then this method works really well if you find yourself in a situation where you may have drawn things on the same layer. 
Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing with the rest of the elements, and then I want to show you how to do those wind swirls, and then we'll be done. So come back to the flattened artwork layer, my selection. The rest should go pretty quick. I just have the pink and the brown, so I'm going to tap on this. I'm going to expand that a bit so it hugs a little tighter to the brown. There we go. Now I can tap the other ones, and then just hit copy and paste. Come back down to the flattened artwork layer selection. Tap in here drag it up a little bit, and then tap on the rest. Oh, see this one? I had too high of a threshold for this one, so now it's selecting the sleeve. So I'm going to deselect that, tap on the selection again, and this time I'm going to focus on this one since it's running into the orange and it starts recognizing the orange as the same color as the brown since they're pretty close. So if I tap on here, tap again, and reduce the threshold, we're going to come down. And I don't know why Procreate does this where you can't, see it when you're bringing it down. So I have to actually deselect, select again, and then tap here, and now I'm in good shape. So now I can bring this up and just make sure that I'm not gonna run into the leaf again. Right there. Okay, so the rest of these should be fine now. Copy and paste, and we're all set. I can turn off my original artwork layer and just make sure everything is in the right order. So I'm going to put the brown above the pink, and now what I want to do is have some wind swirls that come in front of the pink, so it'll be above the pink, but it's going to be behind the orange. So the orange is right here, the pink's right here, so I can actually just create a brand new layer right there. I'm going to select my dark gray, increase my brush size, and I can just draw some swirls in. And then since this one came in front of the brown, let's create a brand new layer and bring this one underneath the brown. I'll switch my color to the light gray, and now these ones can go behind the brown. So it just gives a better impression of depth to this artwork. So now I've got elements that go in front and behind, and because I have layers, it makes it all possible. And then the other useful thing is because I've got everything separated, if I wanted to change the color of an element like these leaves, if I wanted to change it to this purple, now I can do that without affecting other colors that may be touching the leaves since the leaves are now separate. If you enjoyed this quick tip, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.